So amateurish, doesn't hold a candle to others, uh, limited resources. Hey, that sounds like the NDP. <laughs> The CBC released an article and wouldn't you know it, they accidentally wrote something that seemed to be approaching actual journalism. Or maybe they watched our video on the NDP accusing the conservatives of using bot farms. I'm going to guess the latter, but let's take a look. <laughs> bot campaign backing Pierre Polyev looks the work of an amateur, experts say. Academics who study social media say a suspected bot campaign associated with conservative leader Pierre Polyev's recent speaking event in Northern Ontario likely was the work of an amateur. A rapid analysis conducted by Toronto Metropolitan University's Social Media Lab, or SML, concluded the bot campaign does not have the fingerprints of a sophisticated actor, but didn't say who might have been behind it. In July, the social media platform X was inundated with posts following Polyev's tour of Northern Ontario. These posts claimed to be from people who attended Polyev's event in Kirkland Lake, Ontario. They were actually generated by accounts in Russia, France, and other places, and many of them had similar messaging. Academics at SML manually sifted through an estimated 200 bot accounts associated with the campaign. The lab said some of the accounts were created within the last two months. Quote, to confirm that this wasn't part of a broader influence campaign, we conducted a cursory scan of other social media platforms. Our scan didn't find any similar campaign, further reinforcing our hunch that this was likely done by an amateur with limited resources, end quote, said SML in an online post. Quote, if this was an attempt at influencing voters in Canada, it's a crude and amateurish exercise and doesn't hold a candle to other known influence campaigns, end quote. So amateurish, doesn't hold a candle to others, uh, limited resources. Hey, that sounds like the NDP. <laughs> It could be. <laughs> now, to be perfectly crystal clear, we have no idea who is behind this. Even the so-called experts don't have any idea who is behind this. But uh, they're calling it amateurish, and uh, they're saying that it doesn't hold the, a candle to other influence campaigns. The Conservatives, out of all the major parties, have been able to fundraise the most amount of money. So if they were trying this... Um, it seems like they would go with something more proper, more expensive, if I had to guess. Right, not the dollar store version of a bot farm. Yeah, it's like the wish version of the bot farm. Right. Um, so I really don't think that this was like a legit conservative campaign. I'm just saying, this sounds like something that's right up the NDP alley. Look at their press conferences. It's possible. It's also possible it was just some, some random <laughs> individual, right? Um, like nothing stopping any of us from going and hiring a bot firm to sing Pierre's praises all over X right now. It's ridiculous um, and it's amateurish and I certainly wouldn't do it, but um, again, like there's nothing stopping people. So it could very well just be somebody who took it upon themselves to create this fake campaign. Just for fun. And now they see it talk being talked about in the media and they're just sitting back laughing their butt off. Or at some of the NDP and being like, oh, no, we're going to get caught, Shaggy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's continue. SML compared the Northern Tour bot campaign to a Chinese government linked, quote, spamouflage campaign, end quote, in 2023. In October, federal officials said the Chinese government likely was behind a spamouflage disinformation campaign targeting Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, Pierre Polyev and other MPs in August and September of 2023. Global Affairs Canada's Rapid Response Mechanism, or RRM, there's those government acronyms again, set up to monitor foreign state-sponsored disinformation efforts, said the campaign was, quote, connected to the People's Republic of China, and quote, and was meant to curb criticism of the communist regime. The NTP called on the elections commissioner to investigate what was behind the army of bots supporting Polyev. 
The Conservative Party of Canada has denied any role in the bot campaign, a position it reiterated again on Friday. Quote, as we always said, the CPC has nothing to do with this. The Conservative Party does not use bots. It would have been nice if someone had done this research before blindly repeating baseless accusations from the Liberals and NDP, end quote, said Sarah Fisher, Director of Communications for the Conservative Party of Canada. The NDP also called for the Elections Commissioner to get involved. Quote, we need more than speculation on the Kirkland Lake bot scandal. Canadians have a right to know that democratic engagement is open, transparent, and free from manipulation, end quote, the NDP's Charlie Angus said in a media statement. Quote, this is why Elections Canada needs to investigate and lay out clear ground rules, end quote. Angus, the MP for Tim and James Bay, represents the area where Polly have held the rally. Researchers are calling the Kirkland Lake bot campaign an example of a copy pasta attack. The term is derived from copy and paste, selecting a piece of text and copying it somewhere. You know, it's funny because when I was in university, my IT buddies and I, we used to use this, you know, term all the time. We never thought it would actually lead to be called an actual name of an attack. So it's pretty funny. In a copy pasta attack, a block of text is copied and pasted wildly, often for humorous or sarcastic purposes. According to a post from the Canadian Digital Media Research Network, it's frequently used to generate memes or to confuse people who don't recognize it is a joke. The Canadian Digital Media Research Network, or CDRN, is a new organization that gathers social media researchers and experts from around Canada who monitor the online world. McGill University's Media Ecosystem Observatory and the University of Toronto administer the CDRN. The federal government has committed to investing $5.5 million in the network over the next several years. One of a series of measures the federal government announced in 2023 to combat the threat of foreign interference, misinformation and disinformation. The CDRN's Jean Phillips said the network is treating this as both a minor incident and a learning experience. Quote, it's actually quite a valuable case to study, end quote, she said. Quote, this is like a flag of what can come in, especially during elections. So there's a lot that can be learned and understood around these sorts of things, end quote. She said the Kirkland Lake incident represents the first time the network has activated its rapid response team. In addition to the recent real-time report released by its partner, Toronto Metropolitan University's Social Media Lab, SML, the network is committed to releasing further updates on its network website. So we, before we start in on the hypocrisy of the NDP and the Liberals regarding misinformation and disinformation, let's hear what Mark Holland had to say recently when confronted with the question of the alleged bot farm. Just to follow up on another topic, there's been conversation in recent days about the use of bot farms on social media. I'm just wondering, from your perspective, is that something you're concerned about heading into the next election? And do you think the federal government or the Liberal Party needs to do more to try to combat the prevalence of these bot accounts? Well, I don't know about you, Rachel, but I mean, you know, I, you, you go online, I don't stay very long. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty toxic. And uh, we wouldn't talk to each other on the street like that. And there are certainly forces in the world um, that are autocratic and seek to undermine democracy who want to fuel divisions that are between us and get us to uh, talk to each other in incredibly disrespectful and cruel ways. Oh, you mean the ways that Justin Trudeau talks to Canadians? That type of way, Mark? A small minority, small fringe minority, small fringe element in this country, angry, frustrated group of racists holding unacceptable uh, views that is angry, racist, misogynistic. Is, is that the way you're talking? And, and you don't want to go online for very long, probably because you see everywhere you go that Canadians are completely pissed with the Liberal Party. Oh, absolutely they are. And, you know, I just find it rich that the Liberals and, and the NDP as well, but the Liberals especially are concerned about this quote unquote bot attack when they're the ones literally paying influencers to share their message. Yeah, so apparently paying for automated influencers is a bad thing, but paying for human influencers <laughs> is a good thing. And before anybody says anything, we are not influencers. We no. just, <laughs> we look at what's going on in Parliament and we just give the facts. We, we tell it like we see it. And I mean, I'm not even a party member. <laughs> 
Uh, I think whether or not it's a bot or a human, uh, when somebody is speaking without humanity, when is somebody is hiding behind, you know, username 12768, uh, and they give you their opinion, and that opinion is toxic and makes people feel bad, um, then we have to think about as a society why that's allowed. It took us a long time with newspapers uh, and television uh, to figure out you know, how it worked. Uh, and there were some dark forces that used those new mediums uh, in very nefarious ways. And I think we're seeing that here. There's too much toxic negativity. Um, an opinion is fine, uh, but the cruelty with which it's being unleashed should be rejected. And I think we have to be very circumspect, unfortunately, about what we see online. Uh, there are uh, forces that are, are running these bots and trying to overwhelm uh, the internet to give an appearance of a particular opinion or a consensus around something that simply isn't true, and at worst is uh, seeking to undermine our democracy. But when the liberals do it, it's okay. Yeah, well, it's not toxic, right? They no, get, not at all. They get to decide what's toxic, <laughs> right? There's. Well, like the toxic drug supply, toxic masculinity, toxic whatever. But this is the danger with Bill C-63, if it ever comes into law, is that there's nothing in the bill defining hate speech. And whoever is the governing party gets to decide that. You don't even get a proper trial. No, no, you don't. Which, I mean, that's a whole nother video for a whole nother day. And, um, and for the record, C-63 has very little chance of coming into law before the next election. So let's just make sure everyone's clear on right. that. Right. We don't want to freak anybody out, but it has been tabled. It has gone through first reading. And if it progresses any further, Canadians should be ringing the alarm bells for sure. Well, and here's the thing. From a strategic point of view, the Liberals are only going to be tabling bills from now until the next election that they think are going to garner public opinion so they can reverse their fortunes in the polls. That's the only thing that they're going to do. Um, you know, we talked to Franco Terrazano the other day of, you know, is it possible that the Liberals table some sort of bill that introduces a home equity tax? And while it's possible, it, it would be, I would say, guaranteeing that they may be in third place in the election, you know, come, come whenever that happens. But... The other problem is, is they may actually need a home equity tax in order to offset the lack of revenue that they're getting from their capital gains. They need to find it somewhere. Otherwise, they're breaking their own, you know, alleged guardrails. But um, the other possibility is, is they just don't give a damn about their guardrails and they give up their quote unquote fiscal responsibility because, you know, <laughs> that would be a new thing for them to actually care about. Well, you've already doubled the deficit. Why not keep going? Right? <laughs> right? What's an extra $10 billion right? on $1.3 trillion? Right. So um, anyhow, I still go back to my point. Um, all of the evidence, according to the Scooby-Doo story, points to Jagmeet Singh and the NDP. Anyhow, um, I think this story is just going to die a graceful death because there's no chance that this was anything to do with the Conservatives. Um, and uh, I just think that the NDP is grasping at any straw that they can to try and make themselves look important.